Hey guys, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a newsletter in Beehive. Whether you're a small business owner, a community manager, or just someone looking to connect with an audience, this video is for you. So let's go ahead and get started by going to beehive.com and clicking start trial. You'll then need to sign up with your first name, last name, email, and password. You'll then need to confirm your email. So head over to your email inbox and click the confirmation link. Once you've done that, you'll be brought to this page where it's going to ask you your experience with newsletters. And you've got three options, experience, newbie, or curious. And then it's going to ask you to name your newsletter, name your subdomain and add some tags. So go ahead and do that. You can also add an image. So if you've got a logo, that's a good place to pop that in. And then you're going to start your free trial and it's going to bring you here to your dashboard. And we want to start making our first newsletter. So in the top right hand corner, we're going to click start writing. And this is where you're going to create your newsletter. So over on the right, you've got a title so you can name your newsletter, whatever you want. And you can choose whether to show that in the email or not. You can then add a subtitle. And again, you can choose whether or not to show that in the email. You've then got authors so you can add other members of your team in here and you've got guest authors so that if there are people outside of your team who are writing, you can add them. You've also got the option of a byline and hide from feed and you can choose the display date. And over here on the left is where you're going to pop in all of your text and your images. And you can either start writing your email just like this, or if you hit the forward slash, it's going to bring up a bunch of different options for you to add in. So you could add in some images, some headings, some links, all sorts of different things. I have already created some text to use, so I'm just going to grab that. So there we go. I've just added in some text. So let's say I want to add in an image over here. I'm going to go and click this plus button. And then if I had an image already saved, I could click that, but I don't. So I'm going to use an AI image and I'm going to write a description of what I want. So let's try a dog playing with a toy. And if I'm happy with that, I can click insert. Or if I want to try again, we can click regenerate. So I'm just going to use that one for now and click insert. So the AI in this is really helpful. And you've also got an AI writer as well. And I'll just show you how that works. I'll click the plus button and you've got AI writer here. So you can add that in and you can just write in your prompt and it will generate some text based on your prompt. But I actually don't want to use that. So to remove that, I'm going to click on these dots over here and I'm going to click delete. So once you've gone through and you've written your email and you've added images, videos, whatever else you want to add, we're going to look at customizing this and changing the theme. So in the top here, these three dots, we're going to click that and click on theme settings. That's going to open a new tab and it's going to bring you this here. And this isn't your email. This is just an example, which is going to show you what your email might look like. So first up on the left, you've got your outside background. So I'll just change that to show you what that's changing, but I think I'm going to keep it white. And then you've also got your post background, which is this section here. Again, I'm just going to keep that white. You've got your post border, which you can't see now because I've made everything white. But that's just how much space is over here and border thickness. So we could add a blue border and make that thicker. And you can see that's brought a border in. And then you can change things like the spacing, the size of the margins and the line heights. And then down here we've got body text. So we can change the font and you can change your font color. And you can also change your hyperlinks. So for example, they are currently blue, but we could make them yellow. You can then change your header text. So you've got heading one, which is this one here. You can see it says H1. And then for like heading two, you've got H2, H3. So this page here is going to show you absolutely everything that you could possibly have in your email and the different um, formats that they're going to show as. So just as before, you can go through and change your fonts, your colors, all of that stuff. You can then customize your email header, which is this bit up here, the email footer, which is right down at the bottom. So you've currently got a blue background, but maybe we'd make that green. You can then customize the buttons. So here at the moment, they are currently blue. So again, you could change the color, you can change the font and the font color, and then you can also add a border to them. Content breaks, those are these lines here, these yellow lines. So you could change them. You could change the style so you could have them dotted or dashed. You can change the thickness of them. And then next up is images. 
So you can just sort of change the alignment. And if there is a caption underneath, you can change the font. And then again, for lists and bulleted lists, numbered lists, you can change, you know, all the same things as before, fonts and colors. And yeah, there's just a few more things to go through there, but they're all more or less the same. You're just changing the colors and the fonts. So you can mess around with that. And once you're happy with the changes that you've made, you can click save changes. Or if you were happy with how it looked before, just click exit. And we're currently in post settings. So let's head over to email. And here we can make some changes so we can create an A-B test. So if you wanted to try out different subject lines to see which one performs better, you can do that. We're not going to do that now. So you can add your subject line. You can add some preview text and you can choose whether or not to display social icons. And then if you open the advanced section, you've got an option to add a read online URL. If we move over again to website, you can add in, you can change the slug. So that is the text that will show after the website domain. So you've got your domain forward slash whatever. So you probably want to customize that to be the same as your newsletter name. You can also add in an image for a thumbnail and you can choose whether or not to display that image at the top of your web version. And then next up, we've got SEO. So you can add in your title and your description to help with SEO to make this perform better online. And then finally, you've got delivery. And this is where you can choose who to send this to. At the moment, I don't have any subscribers added in, so we haven't got many options here, but this is where you would customize that. So once you're happy with everything down at the bottom, you can click preview to see how this is going to look to the people who receive it. You can choose whether to view it as an email or on the web. And you can also choose whether to view it on desktop or mobile. And you want to go through and check that everything looks as it should do. If you've added any links, make sure the links work. And to just double check that it is working, you can also send a test email to yourself. But once you're happy, you can click schedule. If you wanted to use this template that you've created in the future, you can click save template. So just give it a name and click save and continue writing. But once you're happy, click schedule. And it's going to give you some options. You can either schedule it for a later date or publish it now. Completely up to you which one you do, but I'm going to click publish now. And then it's going to ask you to review it and just double check the notes there and click publish now. Obviously, I've got no active subscribers, so it's not going to work. But for you, it will do. But I'm just going to exit this and we're going to go back to the dashboard. I'm just going to show you how that template works that we created a second ago. In the top right hand corner, instead of clicking start writing, click on the little arrow and click use template. And that is the template that we created a moment ago. So you can come in here and use this template for your next newsletter so that they all have the same sort of theme and style so that you've got consistency across all of your emails. Hopefully that's given you an overview of how to use Beehive for newsletters. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Thanks for watching.